So over the last few years, I've been looking into all the different designs for raised garden beds there are, from wood to concrete to metal. And guys, I found out about this design, which I absolutely love. It's ridiculously sturdy, very affordable, and I actually didn't have to tighten a single bolt or screw for this to happen. And this is something that I believe will, will last for probably um, at least 15 years, if not an entire lifetime. So I want to show you what it is, how it's constructed, and tell you how you can either construct one of these yourself or maybe find a manufacturer near you who could uh, create this. Or maybe even contact the people I bought mine from. And who knows, maybe they'll ship one to your doorstep if you, uh, if you contact them on their website. So um, I'm super excited about this. So let me tell you what it is. Okay, so I have ordered seven raised garden beds. Um, this one right here, uh, I think this is four by 10, so four foot wide by 10 foot long by 16 inch, 16 inch tall. Let's go down a little bit closer. So these are two steel painted brown um, metal purlins. This metal is 14 gauge. If I squeeze it with all my might, it does not budge at all. So this lip right here is very, very sturdy. I cannot <laughs> budge that at all. There, there's no way. It's uh, this is 14 gauge steel, extremely, extremely strong. Let me just demonstrate for you how strong it is. So I'm gonna stand on it, this is totally empty. This becomes even more sturdy when it's filled with dirt, uh, like you can see with these other garden beds. Look at this, Whoop. it's hard for me to figure out what the camera's doing and balance at the same time. Check out this, I can walk on it, look how sturdy this garden bed edge is without any kind of support. So this was built by taking steel purlins. If you don't know what a purlin is, it's a kind of C or D shaped kind of rectangular, um, kind of like hollow beam that goes across metal buildings across the roof to kind of support the roof. And so it's very structural very lightweight but extremely extremely strong i guess not too lightweight um, having all this purlin uh, this is actually a good amount of steel and if i lift it up it's 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 pretty heavy a good hundred pounds of steel um, maybe a little bit more but the price that i got this purlin for was just under 300 dollars for labor and materials the company that built this uh raised garden bed for me um, I believe they might be Mennonite. Uh, they live in Mennonite country in Latham, Missouri, and they're called Midmo Metals. There's a link in the description below where you can contact them if you're interested in maybe getting a quote. I've looked into garden beds on Amazon. They have all those different, you know, uh, garden bed sets that you can assemble, but it probably takes, you know, a ton of screws and bolts and tightening. Guys, I paid about $300 for this and I didn't have to tighten a single bolt. It just got dropped off at my doorstep. <laughs> the guy was super nice. Like I've just, very, very good business guy. Very, uh, I don't know, just seems very honest and, and kind from what I can tell. I, I like doing business with them. Now this bottom brace uh, was actually not necessary, especially going only 10 feet. Um, but this bottom brace is very, very sturdy. I did that just because over the, the years that we have this filled with dirt, I don't want the edges to bow outwards. But honestly, this is so sturdy, I don't think it would bow outwards. And I want to show you what it kind of looks like here. So here you can see we planted some uh, some peppers here and over here we've got some, some tomatoes. These things, they just look so nice and they're painted brown. So they kind of have a natural kind of wood-like feel. Um, now let me show you what happened over here. So over here on this raised garden bed, I don't know if you can see how there's a small dent there. I had this dump truck dump all of this, uh, you know, I think it was like five cubic yards of dirt right here that I got delivered here for about $100 of topsoil. The dirt was just fine dumping on the edge but the the big metal door as the trunk bed lifted it kind of jammed and like wedged down in here and it pushed it down with you know the <laughs> entire force of 
of a dump truck, but you can see that it still doesn't look that bad. I mean, if we come over here, it still looks like a nice garden bed. I mean, you can hardly tell looking from this angle that there's any any damage. Uh, these things are so, so sturdy. I mean, I can put my weight on them, uh, especially when they're filled, and they just do not budge, like, at all. I mean, they are so sturdy, and they're the perfect width that I can go ahead and sit on the edge, and I can weed, uh, and it's super duper convenient to just sit on the edge and grab any weeds. Um, so I think the last at least 15 years, I've talked with people who have uh, had these type of garden beds, and they've had them for like 15 years, and they're still going strong. <laughs> so. Uh, the the owner of this uh, Midmo Metals, I think he has some of these garden beds at his house. He's had for a long time. I talked with a CEO of a business here in Missouri, and he's had these for a long time. Um, I want to show you a 40 foot long one of these I have in the front. Give me a sec. So guys, this right here is a 40 foot by 4 foot. Um, garden bed that I filled with 200 strawberry plants. You can see right here, I've got uh, June bearing plants and over here I've got ever bearing plants. June bearing already stopped producing. You can see the ever bearing are still going strong. I mean, these things, I picked a bunch of berries this, uh, this morning and you know, they're pretty loaded. And I only planted these about maybe two months ago, but this garden bed is massive. 40 foot. I didn't have to screw a single bolt or screw in to assemble this. It was just dropped off at my doorstep. They charged $50 to deliver this to my doorstep. $50 to assemble it. And then $400 for the material. This is 10 inches tall. So it's not a double stacked purlin, but you can see that there's one 10 inch purlin. Uh, you can see how they kind of connect the purlins here at the corner. They have some sheet metal that they kind of use to make a brace. And then um, I think there's four cross braces every like eight or 10 feet. They have a little cross brace on the very, very bottom that kind of supports um, this so it doesn't bow out at all. Um, and you can see how it looks. I mean, it looks just amazing. Like I said, my kids and I, we can walk on top of these even this mid brace, um, I don't even know if this was necessary, but he did put one at 20 foot halfway across this metal brace growing across the top just to keep, you know, keep the purlins from bowing outwards because this is so much weight, so much dirt. Um, to fill this up, you know, I ordered 10 cubic yards of dirt and I had them just piled up right here and then right over here on the other end, I had it um, another half of the dirt over there. And this probably took, I don't know, um, probably like seven cubic yards to to fill this. But now I have this amazing 40 foot long uh, strawberry bed. And total, this costed $500, which granted is a lot of money. But if you compare it to how much garden space you get and how much more sturdy and long lasting this is, compared to what you would find on Amazon, where, you know, you might pay $150 for a teeny two foot by eight foot um, corrugated metal garden bed, but I highly doubt, I highly doubt it's 14 gauge. I mean, this does not budge. I could hit this with a hammer, and I don't think anything bad would happen. I've kicked it multiple times, just because I can, it's so sturdy, I can kick it. It doesn't do anything. Like, it, it's just amazing. Um, so I absolutely, absolutely love this. Um, you can actually order purlins in 12 gauge. Now 12 gauge is almost like twice as thick, which would be ridiculously overkill. I mean, it could like withstand the nuclear blast kind of, kind of overkill. If this was 12 gauge, I can't even imagine. It would be so heavy, so durable. So I've actually thought of using metal purlin, stacking them up and insetting them into the ground and making a bunker out of purlins. They're that sturdy. 14 gauge metal is actually the same thickness of a shipping container. Um, and so it's, it's very sturdy. Anyways, I just wanted to share this with you because 
this has been game changing for me. I made some rough cut oak uh, garden beds, but they did not look nice. They looked very podunk. It costed quite a bit of money um, and took a ton of labor. And ultimately I ended up scrapping them in order to do garden beds out of metal purlins. So I would highly recommend checking out Midmo Metals or maybe contacting a purlin manufacturer in your area and asking them if they can assemble um, a garden bed like this because it's not rocket science. I mean, I can show you what the edges look like. Looks like they cut the metal and they bent it just a little bit right there. So they could then put in some, some bolts. Then they cut another piece of metal that's kind of uh, L-shaped and they put in, you know, four, four bolts here. Um, it's super simple. And look at this whole 40 foot length that's one solid piece of metal <laughs> and it's super strong and looks amazing anyways if this video has been helpful for you uh, feel free to subscribe i'm hoping in the next few months to share a bunch of more update videos it's been a long time since i've shared uh, some homesteading videos and i'm excited to share with you some of the things i learned anyway thanks so much hope you have a good day Bye bye